I want to talk about fulfilling your destiny. Fulfilling your destiny. I didn't come with all the, you know, very fancy <laughs> uh, stuff. I, I just came with my iPad and I will be uh, just talking to us. I, I think I have 20 minutes. 10, 20 minutes. Okay. My background is in medicine. I studied medicine in Nigeria, uh, the first uh, university there, and came over to the UK to further my interest in obstetrics and gynecology. Did a few things in a place called Queen Charles Maternity Hospital, Goldock Road, somewhere near Ch I mean Shepherd's Bush. And things started to go wrong. <laughs> I began to wonder what's life about and what's... I've been a Christian since I was 15, so... And I've never strayed. I, I, you know, I didn't have time to. <laughs> I don't know. We all have different uh, uh, testimonies. <laughs> I've been in God's house Till now, I'm 50, early 50s. And something happened. I was really uh, hurt. I was thinking that my life was going nowhere. Uh, I was having all kinds of difficulty moving forward in my profession. But I've always loved God, served God, you know, always doing things in church and outside of church. Uh, always, I mean, the way I started from was with instruments, you know, playing, singing, worship, you know. I just love God. And I kept having this nudging within my spirit that, you know, I should drop the medicine <laughs> and to move into full-time ministry. My thought was, oh, what are they going to pay me? Because <laughs> uh, I was meant to be here just for four years. Uh, that was 1980. Eight December 23rd, I came into the country. <laughs> I was meant to be here for four years. Now I'm still here for over 20 something years. Please pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was there to, just to do four years, get the FRCOG and just leave and go and set up my hospital in Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, but I found that, that somewhere along the line, there was this strong witness in my spirit that you were meant to drop that profession and take this on full time. Even though before I took it on full time, I was already made a pastor with Pastor Matthew in, uh, in the church then. I... Once I dropped the medicine and I came into full time, it was like some heavy load was taken off my heart. I just had this peace. It was like being saved again, being delivered. And in some way, it was more like I found my true calling, my true purpose, even though I've always wanted to help people. So I had to come on into KICC then as a pastor of counseling and also music. I combined the two then. And I have progressed since then in such a way that I know this is, this. God had things in place. God made some things difficult 
but he created a way to show me that this is part of his plan and purpose and I've never regretted it. Let me read a scripture in Psalm 105, verse 17 to 22. Psalm 105, verse 17 to 22 in the New International Version of the Bible. It says, And he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with shackles. His neck was put in irons. Till what he foretold came to pass. Till the word of the Lord proved him true. The king sent and released him. The ruler of people set him free. He made him master of his household, ruler over all he possessed, to instruct his princes as he pleased and teach his elders wisdom. I want to make a statement before I continue that this world is about God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of thereof. True destiny and purpose can only be realized when you are doing what God says do. It's not about just coming up with something. It's about God showing you who you are and what you are meant to accomplish in life. And you will never have peace until you are in God's will. Until you are doing what he wants you to do. You cannot just create your own destiny. God must be the source. The Bible says he is Alpha. He is Omega. The beginning and the end of all things. I always tell my people. Please understand that this world is not about you. It's about the one who lives forever. <laughs> the one who has no beginning. The one who has no end. And he has just allowed you to share. <laughs> Whether you live to 120, hope you do. <laughs> in just a bit of who he is. And life can only. You see, the world is the way it is because men have drifted from God's original intention. Things can never work together without God. It can never. In Isaiah 46 verse 11 it says, From the east I summon a bird of prey. From a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. A man to fulfill my purpose. What I have said, that I will bring about. What I have planned, that I will do. And this is God speaking. So he's looking for people who will be co-laborers and co-executors with him of his plans and purposes. So when you are really praying to find God's purpose and your destiny, you must say, God, show me. Reveal what you intend to do on earth. What do you really want done? What does God really want done on this earth? Because we can all be running up and down. Trying to do some things and make ourselves feel good. And like the statement that you're climbing the ladder of success. And you find eventually that it's leaning against the wrong wall. <laughs> the earth is the Lord's. And everything in it, the world and all who live in it. The passage I read before Psalm 105 talks about Joseph. We know the story of Joseph. The first thing, he had a dream. Who gave him the dream? God. Because it was not something he just, you know, because sometimes people say, I have a dream, and it's, the, it's a dream they just made up. <laughs> God gave him that dream. Twice, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is confirmed. Twice he had the dream. 
He had no clue what it was all about. And because of his naivety, he went to tell his brothers. <laughs> and from that day, they ate him the more, the Bible says. Because he was always a good daddy's boy. And, uh, you know, they not liked him for that anyway. But now he's telling them that their sheaves were going to bow down to his sheaves. You know. In my African background, you do that, they will, the, the senior brother will, you know, if, if they don't kill you and beat you, you know, you say, me, we'll see. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> you know, he had a dream. So we can know that every purpose, every destiny must come from God. May you find yours. Amen. Hallelujah. And then, every destiny or purpose will also have opposition. And you must be ready for opposition. <laughs> His brothers hated him. There is nothing you want to do in life. That you are doing for God that will not be opposed by the devil or by his court somewhere or some people who are in his camp. <clears throat> but regardless of that, the one who is backing you will make things happen for you. <clears throat> so we see, get the dream. Make sure and have a clear understanding that it's God. Because once you can connect it to God, then be ready to live it out regardless of the opposition. Once you can connect. Because when I, when I moved from uh, medicine to uh, ministry, first my, my senior brother didn't like it. He's, here, he's in this country too. He's a PhD, you know, pharmacy and all that. First thing he said, all that money that was used on you, <laughs> you're just going to drop that. But now, he respects me so much. He's my senior brother. But I'm like, no, I've got to pray for you. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> because I had to stick with what I, I had in my spirit, even though opportunities began to come up. I, you know, with the, in those days, it was the what we call the ECFMG uh, that you do as a doctor to go to the U.S. to practice. <laughs> you know, everything came together. But once I saw that I dropped that, I wasn't going to be bothered anymore. Hallelujah. Now. Even with fulfilling your destiny, you may not know how these things are going to come to pass. Because the story has it that Joseph was sent by his father to go and look out for the welfare of his brothers. You know, just they were in Shechem. And he was sent to go and look out for them. And they saw him coming and they decided that, oh, okay, I think Reuben somehow prevailed. They were going to kill him anyway, but Reuben prevailed and said, oh, let's put him in a pit, <laughs> hoping that he will eventually bring him out and take him back to the Father. So sometimes you may have all that dream and all that going on in your mind that this is what God wants me to become, this is what God, and you find yourself in a pit. <laughs> Nothing happens in a pit. <laughs> and a lot of times it could be because of people who are in opposition to you who just don't like the dream you have. And then from the pit, the next place was, it was now sold into what? Slavery. But one thing kept going on in the life of Joseph that was consistent. Whilst he was in slavery in Potiphar's house, he was excelling in all that he did. You see, because sometimes some people will say, oh, I'm supposed to be up there, doing something up there. 
and they're messing up with what they're supposed to be doing now. <laughs> and I always tell my children, don't, you know, you want to be an engineer, you want to be this, you want to be that. Physics, maths, chemistry. If you don't understand it, you better understand it now. Especially if coming from a typical Nigerian. If you have to know it, you can... <laughs> You know, you, you you just must know it. You don't start thinking or telling anybody you want to become anything. <laughs> you must learn this one very well. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> In slavery, he excelled until uh, Potiphar had to make him chief. You can be sure that when he came into that household, there were other slaves there. There were other servants there. But now, he was made to be above them. In, in some way, he was in training for his true destiny. There was that consistency in the life of Joseph to excel and, and do his best wherever he found himself. He was enjoying where he was on the way to where he was going. Like Joyce Meyer will say, enjoy where you are on, on the way to where you're going. He then also, the next thing, he faced what? A test. And that test was a test of destiny. Here comes wife of Potiphar, who had been looking at him and saw that there was virtue in this man. I mean, it's not so much about being handsome. Yeah, you probably looked good. But sometimes when a person is of virtue and they do things well and they, they seem to have some skill and somebody will be attracted to them. <laughs> and true to form, like most Egyptians of those days, he said to him, lie with me. And Moses, I mean, Joseph refused. Now, Joseph could have said, well, it's all over for me. What should I do? I'm in Egypt, a slave, far from my, I don't even know the way back to Canaan land. <laughs> well, let's settle here. <laughs> even the, like my people will say, the, the wife of the ogre. <laughs> he wants me. What's the point? No, let's just settle here and enjoy this. <laughs> ah, he would have lost his destiny. Now, 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 please understand me. I know there's always God of a second world chance. But that test was a test of destiny. Because he refused and left his, uh, uh, his stop with the lady well, as if he was trying to pull me. God knows what she had tried, started to try on him. <laughs> and he quickly took off his and ran. <laughs> I always tell some of my friends who I have to counsel sometimes who have messed up. Don't you, did, you have the, did, did you not have a leg to run? <laughs> did Joseph not run? Get out of that mess. Don't destroy your life. He ran. There was no born again then. There was no Jesus then. But there was something in him. He's been trained to know that that cannot be right. But because he ran, the woman lied. And now for what he did not do, he is now in what? Prison. Injustice. But all that was still on a journey to the true destiny that God has for him. He's in prison. Definitely thinking that his life was over. Because the point is, in some of those days when you are accused of a thing like that, you just keep you in that prison 
However, I mean, if you read the Bible, there you'll find that there was no question of sentence of 35 years or 20 or 10 years. He would just be lost in the prison. Or maybe they'll kill him off one day. And some stories, uh, not extra biblical stories, say that that somewhere maybe Potiphar also did not quite believe his wife. (laughs) Maybe there's been some history. (laughs) And so he didn't let them kill Joseph. But let's leave that alone. Joseph was there in prison. And he was serving in the prison to the point where the jailer, the head of the prison, is, made him the chief prisoner. What a title. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. He became the head of the so that he was taking care of everything in the prison. There was virtue on him. There was glory. There, there, there was a blessing. There was a covenant blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob upon his life. He was serving, was doing everything well. And he had the presence of mind one day to notice that the butler and the baker to Pharaoh, who were now in prison, is a divine arrangement. (laughs) They were now in prison and he was taking care of them, but he had the presence of mind to notice that ah, they were sad. Because some of us, when we are so full of what we want to accomplish, we don't even care what is going on with other people. I'm focused, my vision, my destiny. What's wrong with you? (laughs) Relax. It has to be fulfilled by God. If God doesn't do it, nobody's going to do it for you. But he had the presence of mind to notice other people's pain. And that's where the gift that was put in him started to manifest as the prisoner I mean the, uh, the prisoners, the butler and the baker told him about his dream I mean, I mean their dreams he then interpreted the dream God gave him the interpretation of the dream and he told the butler when it's good for you <laughs> remember me I'm not meant to be here. I'm not meant to be here. I'm very sure that if Joseph had had the opportunity to be released from that prison, he would be looking for his way back to Canaan, to the bush where he was coming from. (laughs) Because Canaan land was a, a place just, you know, where civilization was in those days was Egypt. Egypt was the happening place. Uh, till this point, you have people who are having a PhD in Egyptology, people trying to still study what went on in the place because it was quite uh, a, a civilized place for the then uh, world. So, two years passed. Because what am I trying to get at here, please? To fulfill destiny, there are things you go through. And it is God, like the scripture says, who will be working in you, both to will and to do of his own good pleasure. You may not like some things you go through sometimes. They are not going to be pleasing to you. It's not going to be the best thing. But God is working it out. Two years he was forgotten. Until Pharaoh himself had a dream. (laughs) And then the butler. Whose dream was favorable. And the baker had been killed a long time. Because uh, Joseph had told him. Your dream is not not a good one. He now remembered, ah, I've done wrong. There was a man who, when I was in prison, interpreted my dreams. And everything interpreted is what? Word 
It has come to pass. The way he said it. And the Pharaoh said, come on, go and bring him. Because his own advisors and soothsayers and everybody around him could not interpret the dream. And here comes Joseph. Shaved, got himself ready, stood before the king and gave him what? The interpretation. And even Joseph began to tell the king, look for someone in your kingdom who will be able to organize this thing, you know, the first seven years of plenty. And the, and the man says, hmm, I'm very sure he looked around and saw all his advice. This one? <laughs> no, <laughs> that one, no, not that one. <laughs> There's no other person I can. It must be you. He wasn't, he wasn't expecting it. But when God has his hands on you, you will fulfill your destiny regardless of opposition, regardless of the issues and circumstances of life you go through. He said, you'll be the one. And at that point, he was just about 30 years old. I think right from the time he was 17 was when he was going to see his brothers and had been put in slavery since then. Now, 13 years after, the word of the Lord, the Bible says, tried him, proved him to be true. And his word came to pass. And the Pharaoh said, he was going to be the second in command to the whole empire. A Jew who was not an Egyptian. <laughs> There's not a is black, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Once you have what it takes and the hand of God is upon your life, Nothing can stop you. It was right there. Now, but the dream has not come to pass yet the way he saw it. Positionally, he is now head uh, after Pharaoh over all the things and people were coming from different nations around to get supplies. And there was famine in Cana. <laughs> Because if, if, if uh, Joseph had remained in Canaan, that dream will not manifest. Sometimes God changes your location so that it can bring to pass the dream and the vision and the purpose and the destiny he has for you. I know for myself that if I was remaining in Nigeria, I would be practicing. Probably be a professor right now. <laughs> but God has better things in store. And here comes this famine and his brothers, the father said, well, there's nothing here. You guys go to Egypt, you hear that there's plenty happening. And here they come to Egypt. And Joseph recognized them. Because you have to understand that the Joseph of the 17 year old is different from the one who is 30. And right now he's dressed as an Egyptian. All those, you know. He's probably dressed as an Egyptian because his name was now Zafnath Panier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's jaw locking. <laughs> Zafnat Panier. His name was different. It's not Joseph. And the brothers could not recognize him. They just saw him as a ruler. But he saw them, you know, this is Reuben. Ah, this is Judah. And as they were coming to him, definitely, because he was ruler, they had to work. Now, I'm very sure God allowed 
his visage and all that to be changed because if they recognize that it's Joseph, ah, we won't let that dream happen. Ah, look, ah, this guy, this joker, this joker, he thinks he thinks he can, <laughs> he thinks he can. <laughs> no. We don't care for this uh, grain. Take your grain. We we'll go. We we'll, we'll go and commit suicide rather than that. <laughs> they had no clue that this was Joseph, and they bowed. <laughs> I'm very sure not once, <laughs> because their life depended on this grain. <laughs> And Joseph went and was weeping. You know, when your dreams begin to come to pass, your cry is a cry of joy rather than of pain. He could see that, ah, so God, this is what you have been planning all this time. That I have to go through this pain, the pit, the prison, the opposition to just get to this point in life. I believe strongly that many of us and all of us can be great because our God is a great God. But great in the things that he has ordained for us to do. Anyone who finds his purpose in life there is no doubt there will be greatness on you. Because that greatness is coming from the one who gave you that destiny, that purpose. And so Joseph moved from the prison to the palace. Joseph never knew that the process he was going through was leading to his destiny. So when we talk about fulfilling destiny, and that's why I started with my own personal testimony. I can't even give you all of it tonight because I have two services tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's, I, I, it's so important to know that God has to be the alpha. He will not be the omega if he's not the alpha. He, will, he can only finish what he authorizes. That's why the Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. That's why I, I, you have to take your authority from him. Should I go or should I not? And you will finish well in life. God bless you.